3.4 Economics and Science Optimization Problems. This is basically just a continuation of what you did in 3.3, only using some different applications. So um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so that way I know how many people are watching my channel and it's also good for my numbers. Sorry I haven't been on for a while. I've had some um, work-related things to do and um, some very serious health issues to deal with in my life. But I'm back, so let's get going here and we're going to talk about some of the terminology first. So the average cost does not use calculus. Okay, That's very important that you distinguish between what you have to take the derivative for and what you don't have to. So if I asked you basically what's the average cost of something, let's say I told you that I bought um, five pens for $20 you would assume that I paid about $4 per pen. That's my average cost. I may have bought one pen that was $10 and a few that were a lot cheaper, but the average cost is just evaluating the cost for the X units. Usually you have a cost function to deal with, and then you divide by the number of things that you bought or have. Now the marginal cost, this is where anytime you see the word marginal, you want to take the derivative. So the marginal cost is a cost to produce one more unit. So basically you're finding the slope of a tangent at that point, And that slope is giving you the marginal cost. Same thing for profit. Once you have a profit function, you're finding the profit for one more unit. Again, it's the slope at a certain point. So it might be after 100 units, might be after 1,000 units. And your marginal profit will change if it's not a direct linear relationship, right? We know that because that's what calculus does. And the same thing with revenue, the revenue for one more unit. Now it's important that you understand what revenue and profit are. So let's talk revenue is the number of items sold times the price per item. So basically this would be like you having a lemonade stand as a child and you sold 100 cups of lemonade at a dollar each and you made a hundred dollars and you think that's what your profit was because you're a child and you don't understand that there was cost involved in making that lemonade right so your your profit is the money that you bring in so that's your item sold times a price less the cost and your mom or dad whoever helped you make the lemonade will know there was a cost involved you'll learn that as you get older everything costs money so you had to buy the lemons or the lemonade mix or maybe your parent made some cookies or maybe you had to get some plastic cups to serve it in. So whatever it is, there was a cost involved and your revenue minus that cost is your profit. It's pretty basic. Okay, so let's do an example from your homework. It says the cost in dollars to produce X liters of maple syrup is C at X equals 75 times the root of X minus 10 where x is greater than or equal to 40. Why x greater than or equal to 400? Sorry, 400. So if I put in 400 here, I would get um, 20 minus 10 is 10 times 75. So there's some cost that is $750 before I even start making the maple syrup. Those would be your startup costs. So basically you had to put some taps on your maple trees. Um, maybe you had to buy a great big... Um, pot to boil off the um, boil the sap in to make the syrup so whatever it was there was some basic cost so what is the average cost of producing 625 liters so again this is average cost so all I really need to know is what was the cost to make 625 liters and then I'm going to divide that by the 625 so let's do the math on that so it's 75 times the square root of 625 minus 10. And what's the square root of 625? Oh, I think it's 25, right? Yeah, 25. Just double checking on my little trusty calculator. So 25 minus 10 is 15. And 15 times 75 is going to give me the wrong answer on my calculator. 75 times 15 is going to be 1125. Okay, so that's the cost of making 625 liters. What is the average cost? 
So the average cost is going to be 1125. So that's your cost for 625. And I'm going to divide that by 625 and uh, divide by 625. And I'm going to get 1.8. Oh, it's not approximately. It's actually equal to 1.8. So therefore, the average cost is a dollar eighty per liter when six hundred and twenty five liters is produced. Okay, so that's that's pretty easy. Everyone can do an average cost. Sorry, ran off the page. Okay, so average cost six hundred and twenty five liters, a dollar eighty per liter. Part B asks you what is the marginal cost? Okay, so you see the word marginal. Marginal means you're going to take the derivative, right? So what is derivative? Well, first let's write out the cost function again. So that was 75 times the root of x minus 10. And I'm going to expand that before I take the derivative. So that's 75 and the root of x is x to the half power and minus 750. Okay, so I want marginal cost, so I want the derivative. So see prime x, so a half times 75 is 37.5, and I reduce the exponent by 1, gives me x to the minus 1 half, which is the root of x in the denominator, and the derivative of negative 750, that's just 0. So I want to know what is c prime at 1225. So that's what we want to know, right? That's what you're being asked to find. So C prime at 1225, that's going to be 37.5 divided by the square root of 1225. And the square root of 1225 just happens to be 35. So I have 37.5 divided by 35, and I get, let's see if that's an exact number, 37.5 divided by 35, oh, no it's not, so approximately equal to 1.07. So therefore the marginal cost, marginal cost, don't forget concluding statements when you're doing word problems, is $1.07 per liter, I'm going to write it up this time, at 1,225 liters, okay? So at that very point, so remember we're finding the slope of a tangent to the curve at 1225. How much production is needed to achieve a marginal cost of 0 0.50 liters? So this time I want this to be my marginal cost. So that's my C prime, C prime. So I want C prime of X to be 0 0.5. So I'm going to set C prime X equals 0 0.5 and solve for X. So C prime X was equal to 37.5 over the root of X. So I'm just taking that right from my derivative I did above. And I'm going to set this equal to 0 0.5 and I'm going to multiply by the root of X and that gets rid of it on this side, 37.5. If I divide by 0 0.5 here, it's like dividing by half. Guess what I'm going to get on the, the right side now? I'm going to get 75, right? 37.5 divided by half is 37.5 times 2. That's 75. And I want to get rid of this radical sign. So I'm going to square both sides. And if I square both sides, it gets rid of the radical sign. And 75 squared is 5,625. So that means you would need to produce, you need to produce 5,625 liters of syrup to have a marginal cost marginal cost of 50 cents per liter. And there you go. That's question one from your textbook. You probably 
did that for your homework. Now make sure that if I'm doing a question from your homework that you're actually trying it first. Don't just copy down what I'm doing and then think you know what you're doing. Or you can, you know, do your best to try to figure it out on your own first. Okay, a real estate office manages 50 apartments at $900 per month. All units are rented. For every $25 increase in rent, one unit becomes vacant. On average, all units require $75 in maintenance repairs each month. How much rent should be charged to maximize profit? Okay, so I want a profit function. So if I'm going to do a profit function, I need revenue minus costs. So let's look, let's pretend they didn't ask for profits. Let's say they wanted to maximize revenue. And I, because I know that profit equals revenue minus cost, right? So that, that's basically what I'm going to try to set up here. But right now, the revenue now, revenue right now is 50 apartments at $900. That's before cost. Now you wouldn't put the dollar sign in there. You shouldn't have done that. Okay, so 50 times 900. So I'm making $45,000, right? So there's my revenue. But it says for every $25, so if I increase by $25, this is my dollars, I lose one, and this is my numbers. So this is my numbers here, this is my numbers, and this is my dollars, right? Numbers, dollars. So we're going to let X represent, this is where it gets tricky because you think it's some answer that you're going to get, but if it is an answer, but I mean, it's you have to understand what you're letting X be here. Let X represent, it's the number, the number of $25 increases. Or you could say let X represent the number of rental losses, whatever way you want to put it. So if I go up, so if I increase the rent here, so if the dollars go up, so this is plus, we're going to put an X with each one of these. So if I go up $25, this goes down to 49. If I go up $50, this is going to go to 48 and so on. So you can see that I'm adding. So to maximize the revenue, I'd say, well, I take 50 and I lose one X every time I add 25 X's to the price. Okay, so this is your maximizing the revenue. And sometimes the questions that you have, that's all they ask you to do, right? Maximize revenue. Here's your equation. But I want to do profit for this one. So it requires one more step because I have $75 in maintenance repairs each month. So that means my profit is going to be, I have 900. Well, so let's go to let's keep it the same way. So I had 50 times 900. And right now, I have $75 per unit, or let's put the units first, so we'll keep it in the same order, 50 times 75. So this is numbers, this is dollars. This is numbers, this is dollars. So these are my repairs. So my profit, my repairs are my cost, right? These are repairs. So this part is repairs, this part is revenue, which we did over here. So if I want to maximize, so I'm going to say profit maximized, I have to change this to be 50 minus X times 900 plus 25 X. And then I'm subtracting. What's changing here is not the, um, is not the amount here, right? This $75 isn't changing here, but this is going to change. So the number of units... I go down by, so if I don't rent any apartments, I don't have to do any repairs. So these are my, my maintenance here, maintenance, and this is my revenue over here. And the, the maintenance is equal to my cost. 
Okay, so now we're all set up. And what I have to do now is I need to expand. I need to expand this profit function so I can take the derivative of it. So here we go. So 50 times 900, that's 45,000. 45,000. And 50 times 25x, 50 times 25. Mm -hmm. I don't know that in my head. Uh, 50 times 25 is 1250. So 1250x. And then I have minus 900x. And then I have minus 25x squared. So I've done all that now. Now this one, I have minus 50 times 75. That's minus 3750. And minus a minus times this, that's going to be plus 75x. Okay, so if we simplify all this, we have minus 25x squared, and then we have um, 425x's, and we have 45,000 minus this is uh, 41,250. Okay, so there's my lovely equation. Now I'm going to take the derivative of it, right? Because I want to know, I want to find the maximum. So P prime of my maximum is going to be minus 50x plus 425. It gets rid of all these big numbers, doesn't it? Okay, so for critical values, we're going to set P prime equal to zero. So 50x equals 425 and x is equal to 8.5. Okay, so if you ended up here and you had 50x equals negative something, it's probably a mistake, right? So be really careful with your expanding here. Check your numbers. Make sure you don't make a mistake on that. Okay, so if I'm going to have eight and a half eight and a half changes. So this is the number of $25 increases. That would mean I would be not renting eight and a half units. So that's not possible. So I have to choose either eight or nine. Now it doesn't matter because basically what's happening here, we have, um, we have a concave down parabola, right? So if something concave down, let's see, so here's, here's eight and here's nine and here was the max rate in the middle. So you can choose eight or nine and you would have the same value. So let's choose, um, let's choose eight. So then we would say, therefore eight increases of $25. And you might want to say, just so you're explaining to your teacher why you picked eight, eight increases of $25, um, we can, only rent full units, right? You can't rent out half a unit. So eight, how much rent should be charged? So eight increases of $25, that would be uh, $200 increasing. So $200 increase in rent, and that would be $1,100 per month. Okay, so that's your that's your um, maximum profit would be obtained at $1,100 per month. Didn't ask you what it was, it just says how much rent should be charged. So make sure you read the question carefully if they're asking for um, how many units would you have. Well, we're going to be down eight units, so it's going to be 42 units. So we could say 42 units at $1,100, okay? So those are the profit kind of questions. And the last one I'm going to do is this one from question nine. And it says that you have a 20,000 cubic meter rectangular cistern. So that's one big thing, right? 20,000 metric cubic metrics. Uh, meters is to be made with a length twice the height 
$40 per meter square cost for the base. I shortened the question down a little bit because I didn't want to write it all out, but basically I've got all the facts here. Find the dimensions to keep the cost to a minimum, and they want x to be between 1 and 22, and that had something to do with the depth that the uh, cistern could be buried. So the first thing, we have a volume, right? This is our volume here, volume. And we're trying to keep costs to a minimum. So what should you be trying to minimize here? Minimize, minimize the surface area, right? We want to minimize the surface area. So we have two equations. So we're going to have a volume equation. So the volume is going to be 2x times y times x, right? 2x times y times x. So that's length times width times height. Length, width, height. So that gives me 2x squared y. And the volume here is 20,000. So this means we could write one of the variables, and it's going to be the y here. Now maybe you say, well, why did you pick y? Because we're going to find the surface area. So let's do surface area. So we have the base plus two sides plus the end. So let's let's figure this out here. So the base is 2xy, 2xy, 2x times y. The sides, um, now there was something about the side walls. Okay, the side walls are all the same. So for the side walls, we have 2, 2x times x. So this one and this one. So 2, 2x times x. 2x times x. That's this little thing here. So two sides and we have two ends. So the two ends, the ends are the, this one and this one. So that's x times y. 2xy's plus the top. Now we had to split these all out, the base from the top, because there's different, different costs to do each of them. Okay, so now I have the surface area written out. And I know the base is $40. So I'm just going to put that over top of this. So this is $40. The sides are $100. The two ends, hmm, hmm. What do we say for the ends? The ends are the same price. Maybe I didn't yet. Yeah, that's the same as the sidewall. Okay, so that's $100. And the top is a little more expensive at $200. That's the roof. Okay, so the cost is going to be 40 times 2xy plus 100 times, what's this, 2, 4x squared. 100 times 4x squared plus 100 times 2xy plus 200 times 2xy. And now you just get to do some baby math here. Some very simple multiplications. So 400x squared, 200xy, 400xy. Okay, so now I have to do something about this y value, right? So we could simplify this a little more because we have some xy's here. So we have 400x squared and we have xy with 4, 6, 680 xy's. So simplify as much as you can before you plug in the wire. You've got lots of mess to deal with. And we said y here, so we, we didn't solve for a y yet, did we? So y is going to be 200,000 divided by 2x squared. So that's 10,000, not 200, 20,000. So 10,000 divided by x squared. Okay, so now we're going to plug that in here. Plus 680 x times 10,000 over x squared. 
Okay, so that's going to leave us with 1x in the denominator and this really huge number. So I guess we should write that out before we take the derivative so that you're not lost. So 400x squared plus, so 680, and this would be x to the negative 1. Right, it's going to be in the numerator. I mean in the denominator, so we'll bring it up, make it negative. So I have one, two, three, four, five zeros, one, two, three, four, five zeros, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now we're going to take the derivative finally. Okay, c prime. That's going to be eight hundred x minus six eight zero 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 and that's going to be over x squared okay you know i got x squared because it would have been minus this x to the minus two so i put it in the denominator okay so we need to say for critical values set c prime x equal to zero so if i put this on the other side that's going to give me 800 x cubed actually I'm going to move I'm moving this to the other side so I keep everything positive is equal to six eight zero I keep forgetting how many zeros there are there we go so x cubed is going to be equal to let's get rid of some zeros and get rid of two of them here and two of them here so x cubed is six eight one two three 68,000 divided by 8 and then I'm going to take the cube root of both sides here. So x is approximately equal to 20.4. Okay so that was a lot of work but now I have my x. So the x is 20.4 and we said that x had to be between 1 and 22. So that's okay, it fits, this 20.4 for my depth. And now I'm going to go back and plug in all the dimensions. So I want the dimensions, so I need to know every one of them. Don't stop now. So I'm just gonna tell you what they are because the dimensions, um, that's pretty basic math for you. You can check your answer. Dimensions should be 20.4. 4 times 40.8 that's twice it and the y1 is a little trickier to figure out but it is 24 meters and there you go okay so that's three um, pretty typical kind of questions that you're going to see in this unit if you have any others you'd like me to do please let me know and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching